This is a 165 watt solar panel. Honestly, I can't remember who made it. Um, as far as I can tell, they're all pretty darn good. Um, I screwed it into the davits. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I want this to play out, so I did kind of temporarily zip tie this, but uh, if I like the panel here like this, I'll, I'll put a bolt in here, make this more. It puts out 9.16 amps, which seems to be enough to keep up with the refrigerator, which is my biggest energy hog on a sunny day. Um, in theory, I could add some more panels on here, but I want to see how this one does. Um, the hardest part with solar is just finding a place to put them. Um, one upgrade I did, I got stuff all over the place, we just went for a bike ride. One important upgrade I did was a smart plug. Shore power is a big source of fires on boats, because this will get loose and it'll start arcing. On the Vagabonds, my original plug was here, and it totally melted one night. Um, it, was a, it was a loose wire in there. Anyway, the way they located this, there's a bunch of cabinetry inside, and the smart plug needs a lot more space, so it just wouldn't work there. So basically, I'm using an unused door raid vent. Seems to work fine. The nice thing about smart plug is they have an upgrade kit. Um, I recycled my shore power cord that had melted you just cut off cut off the melted plug and put the new one and you put in the uh, put in the receptacle and it's a lot safer smart upgrade okay let's take a look on the inside I had three main goals on the inside uh, the first was to upgrade the electrical panel it had the original panel with a bunch of really old, kind of scary toggle switches. The AC part was starting to melt. It was just a fire waiting to happen. So I got a brand new Blue Seas panel. I uh, really love it. The other thing was to separate the bilge from the panel. The, the bilge was on the panel there, but now the bilge has its own power to the battery. And it has an alarm. Um, that's kind of a work in progress because in order for the alarm to be practical, I need to I need to have a working sump for the shower and still working the bugs out of that. And the other goal was I had three 8D batteries, which each weigh 166 pounds in this uh, seat right here, and it was causing the boat to list. So I needed to balance my batteries out. And I ended up by doing that by moving the house bank here. So there's two batteries in this, um, bench that's center line of the boat. AC is just as basic as I could get away with. Um, the most important thing on my boat is the, is the DC system because this boat is intended to be away from the dock. I managed to salvage the Blue Water Yacht Builders emblem from the original one, uh, but I did have to cut out plastic here. Um, I did uh, this is still a little messy, but I did manage to clean it up, and I have to put this um, cover over the AC, so it's up to code. This silly piece of plastic was $76. DC panel has um, an amp meter, so right now I'm drawing one amp off the battery. The reason it's so low is we're on shore power. Uh, it will tell you the voltage of the battery bank. So an example of a cheap uh, multimeter from Amazon is this one right here. It measures the AC. I only have 30 amp service and I'm in, I live in Seattle where it's it cold and I use electric heat so I really have to monitor how many amps I'm using because I have 30 amp service and it starts getting close to 30 it's time to start turning stuff off. So this part of the boat here behind the centerline seat. This is kind of the technical panel, if you will. Got the um, rear emergency bilge pump here, uh, front bilge pump here, the main one. Uh, the only thing original here that came with the boat when I got it is the tank tender. It uses air pressure to measure the 
level of the tanks works great. This is my solar controller. You can see, yeah, we're getting in 1.6 amps. I'm not really using it. Um, but anyway, I decided to get this one because it had a built-in screen that tells you what it's doing. Kind of like that feature. And I also got an inverter. Um, the inverter is kind of buried under this desk. It's just a metal box. So the inverter powers this outlet here off the battery for recharging stuff and just doing, you know, recharging computers, recharging the cordless drill. And behind that, uh, those doors over there, there's a computer and you can use that off the battery power and we can watch movies. This is the starter battery. All it powers is the starter to start the engine. And this switch right here is for the windlass. One thing I haven't put in yet that I need to do is a trickle charger to let the house bank charge this bank so the battery doesn't die. Uh, when we went to leave this morning, um, the battery was dead and I had to run a cable over here. This battery is completely isolated from the house bank. Um, I have a, a double output alternator. It's a smart setup because you can't accidentally run this battery down. This whole thing was full of batteries, like 500 pounds of batteries, so the poor boat was listing. Now here is kind of, this looks like a complicated mess, but there's a method to the madness. Um, two 8D batteries, each one has 225 amp hours. So that's 450, but you can really only go down 50%, so I really only have 225. This is the solar panel that charges it up. This connects them together. This is the shunt that tells me how many amps are coming out of the battery that is on the panel right there. Right now it's on voltage. Turn it on. Yeah, just one amp. It's measuring that one amp coming out of the battery. It's just powering lights. This right here and this right here, these are two gauge um, cables that go to my Xantrex inverter charger. So they need to be really heavy because if you like use your microwave or something, it draws a huge amount of power. I'm still tweaking this system. So all right now I have blankets stuffed in there to keep them from sliding around, but eventually I'll do some carpentry and uh, have the batteries in there secure so they don't slosh around. And I need, when I go on the ocean, I need to find a way to keep them from coming out if the boat capsizes, but that's not really a risk when we're in Puget Sound. I'm just doing coastal cruising right now. Um, some of this stuff over here, that's just a uh, monitoring cable for the Xantrex inverter charger. And it has a very primitive um, control panel there. This, there, You can leave this on the unit itself. BUL is bulk charge, um, whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, just ask in the comments.